This is uh, Solar Impulse TV. Time again for another briefing update. We've just had the briefing at Zero Zulu. Uh, the team here are working 12-hour shifts. And uh, we have Mickey Anger here, the flight director, who's coming to the end of his shift. A long shift or an OK shift? 12-hour uh, shift, core, core time, yes. Uh, good shift. OK, not too bad. And we're just having a discussion about records. Now, every single second that Andre Borschberg, this man here, is in the air, He's breaking records every single second, uh, the record for a solar aviation. And we're thinking, we're just having a discussion just before we went on air about the uh, record for solo aviation in any kind of plane. Uh, we are at around uh, 78 and a half hours of flight now. And uh, the last time we checked, 76 hours was the record. Now, this is unconfirmed so far, but this is based on the information that we have. So uh, records galore. When we last spoke to Andre Borschberg, we said that he needs to change his mobile phone number now mm -hmm. and, and the rest of his family because I think by the time he reaches Hawaii, there's going to be huge press. He's going to be on the front page of all the newspapers, uh, TV and radio. Uh, so he's looking great uh, yet again. He says it's down to the, down to the, the, the makeup and the cream. But um, I think he is still enjoying it. And we heard just there that the mood is really good. Lots of jokes, uh, lots of humor. Yeah, the best was actually when he uh, came out of resting... Uh, during his night, uh, he put uh, some beard on and some long hair and uh, switched off the cameras and then got up and said, Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> My beard grew. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, note to the team uh, here, we're going to get a look at that photo for the next update, which will be energy, energy neutral evening at around uh, 4.50 UTC. So let's take a look at that photo a bit later on. Anyway, back to now. Uh, the point of this update is always to take a look back at the main points of the last 12 hours and look ahead to the next 12 hours. And, uh, well, where should we start? Why don't we start with um, um, the flight plan uh, to see where we are now. Let's take a quick look at that on the screen. Okay, now start is not Nagoya, a mistake I've made in the past. Start always refers to more or less where we are now, when this flight plan was, uh, was updated. And uh, PHJR is the code for Kalialoa Airport in Hawaii. Uh, okay, now um, let's take a look at the main points, Mickey, of, of what's left to do. What's left to do? Uh, not the past first. Well, I was going to talk about the past, but then I saw this map, so I've, oh, I've it's fine. I suddenly can improvised and changed. But we'll, we'll go back in time afterwards. I want to have a look at Plateau after, but let's okay, take a great. look now. Uh, so what's, what's going to happen uh, in future now is that we are actually we are here in Climb. So we did here, what you see here is this kink here is our U-turn because the sun was shining from that side. And we put the tail into the sun uh, early morning to get most of the energy out of the sun. So that's why we flew this heading, this kink, and then he turned around towards Hawaii again. And he's now basically somewhere here, climbing uh, and, uh, at 14,000 feet at the moment. Uh, so I think uh, it's good to remind everyone now, because sometimes we get messages from people saying, are you heading back to Nagoya? The plane's facing in the wrong direction. Now, we had Florian, who explained very well the difference between holding and U-turns. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Do I have to explain it again? That's okay, I can do it if you like. I remember, <laughs> no, I, I still remember, I just okay. about. It's a challenge for you now. Okay, well, holding is uh, usually a time when there isn't sun. There's nothing to do with sun. A holding is trying to avoid uh, weather patterns uh, by staying in one position until the weather uh, gets better further ahead. U-turn is, is during a time when we have sun to maximize the amount of sun that hits the solar panels. Sometimes due to the angle of the sun, it's better to be facing the wrong way uh, at that point to make sure we get as much solar energy as possible. Is that good? Not bad, Connor. Really great. Can I join the, <laughs> can I join the engineering team one you're day in, before the in. end of the flight? You're in. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, let's now head back. Let's look at the plateau now. 
the, uh, we can see the Sol 4 plateau. Now, uh, this is a chance for us to take a, a look back, I think, as well. Now, what, well, just about, actually, because we can't see too much in the background in the Sol 4. Well, let's, stick, let's leave this here for now because then we can talk about coming up to energy neutral evening. And um, I've made a few notes. And well, why don't you take me through what you think are the main points of the last 12 hours? The last 12 hours uh, were driven by resting, resting, resting to get to a good pilot health. But it was actually not so easy to uh, get good rest for Andre because uh, we've, we had difficulties to find a smooth layer of air. And it, smooth, we mean really smooth for our airplane because it's so sensitive and then he could sleep. Um, so actually he had many periods of, of rest in a row. We had 170 minutes in all apparently. Yeah, even more in terms of uh, resting periods. It was like 300 minutes of resting period. Mm. Uh, but in, in the end he could only sleep this 170 minutes because he was always disturbed and we had to wake up him uh, with the wake up button. And uh, because we saw the autopilot was yeah, managing but maybe going out of its limits so we had to wake him up. I know this was a slight concern of Andre, the way in which he was being woken up, the fact that there was a, a rather rude awakening and there was some concern earlier from him uh, initially that uh, this, this is a fairly stressful awakening. Uh, how has he managed to, has he got used to that now? Well, uh, he says he, he gets used to it because he, he knows what to look at uh, when, he, when he gets woken up, but nevertheless it's, when you hear that sound in the aircraft you, you don't actually know why. So the sound, the, 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 the tone is the same as, uh, as you would, uh, for example, bank over or stuff like that. So the situation is always serious for him to wake up and he has to check the attitude of the aircraft, the speed and so on. And then he sees, ah, it's the MCC wake up call due to autopilot maybe on its limit. So that's certainly very stressful and he said that, that every time he gets his wake up uh, button or call, it's, it's a stressful moment and it's then it's difficult to get back into a sleeping pattern. Okay, but nevertheless, 170 minutes of what we think we can call a good sleep. Oh, yes. Um, right, let's turn now to uh, Plateau, the planning tool, taking us through the next uh, cycle. Uh, the main point when we come back on air will be energy neutral evening, which is around about here. The calculation given to us was 450 UTC. Yes, exactly. So actually we are on the way uh, on this on this kink here, climbing, um, charging the batteries, and uh, inner holding, as you can see on these points, it's one waypoint where we, where we have the holding, and this holding we have because we don't, didn't want to put the holding on in the next night, because by putting a holding in the night, you have a longer night in the end. So a longer night means less energy, so we said, okay, let's hold before, because on solar day five, we also have to hold to to approach the front and cross the front at the right time and altitude. So actually we do the holding now to slow down the flight a bit. It's a pity, but we have to. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about that, that, um, that, that weather situation we have to uh, handle. Now we knew before the flight that we would have two cold fronts to cross, two weather fronts. The first front was dissipating, not really very worrying at all. People laughing and saying, well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fake front, it's nothing, no problem. However, this one is a real situation and that, that's why again the timing is critical for energy neutral evening and I know as well that uh, we heard during the briefing that this is probably the most critical night during the flight. Energy wise for sure yeah we, um, the battery state of charge will go as low as never in in this mission flight uh, over this five days so we approach four kilowatt hours maybe we can get s some out of it by descending further Okay, so when people are looking at the website, in terms of percentage, what does that relate to when we get down to here? It's about 10% uh, in the wow, end, okay. 8 or 10. I've never seen that before. we never seen that before. And yeah, 10% or 4 kilowatt hours mean roughly we have one hour more power to maintain level flight and then it's, then it's done. So uh, that's really on the edge. Uh, so that's why we are also playing with these holdings to not have a longer night artificially. Okay, and we can even see towards the end of the flight now, uh, uh, yeah. just the, the beginning of Sol 6, and the weather is looking very good for the approach to Hawaii. It is, it is, it is, uh, but certainly before that we have to a uh, front to cross on Solar Day 5. That's what you see here with the altitude profile. Uh, we also have a few tactical holdings 
in front of it, of the front. Uh, but if we see it's fine, we can leave them away and we would arrive earlier over, over Hawaii. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for the handover information, Miki. And uh, we are coming up next around about 4.50 UTC. So we'll start around five minutes before that. Energy neutral evening. Uh, important to really maximize the energy here because we have our most crucial energy neutral morning here around about 1800, just before, around, no, 1800 uh, Zulu uh, for uh, the end of Sol 4. Uh, because it's going to get low, as Mickey said, batteries down to 10%. It's going to be the tensest moment so far there in terms of the battery state of charge. And if all goes well, then we're into the final straight, crossing over that cold front uh, in Sol 5. And then we're on the way, so fingers crossed. Let's just go back to, well, there we can see the man himself looking very good. But let's take a, a look at some of the um, pages on our website that you can look at as well. Uh, first of all, the battery state of charge now. So we can see what situation we're in with the batteries charging. Let's take a look at the battery state of charge. It's coming. There we go. Right. So um, we had one more word from Capcom, which was in terms of uh, energy use, we were, we were looking really good. Well, in fact, better than we've been expecting. Yes, uh, that's a bit of a problem today, uh, being better uh, in terms of collecting energy, because we have uh, also to manage our battery temperatures and uh, they're rising slowly when you charge them and actually we we have to avoid making them too hot so actually what we do at the moment that's why we fly uh, high um, airspeed for our relation uh, for our aircraft we fly uh, 37 knots and we we climb a bit uh, earlier than expected because we want to get a low charging current on the batteries um, yeah but in the end it's a good thing to have more energy yes Okay, um, but an interesting problem. We've had this for quite some time now, this problem about trying to avoid overheating the batteries. And as you're saying, it's an interesting problem to have, uh, the idea that we want to slow down the rate at which we bring energy into the batteries. Exactly, and uh, that's, that's one way you can reduce the energy coming into the batteries, or you could sacrifice the pilot to go up higher to have cooler outside air temperatures and cooler batteries, therefore. But um, I talked to Andre and he not really likes it for the moment. Okay, a final word before you go, Miki, and uh, let's just say something nice about the US military because we've said no military activity on arrival, that's what we've heard. Thank you for not doing anything uh, and, or firing off any missiles as we arrive to Hawaii, that's really helpful. That's really helpful and we can fly straight in, I hope. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Miki, uh, for talking to us and uh, we will have a new update, energy neutral evening, 4.50 UTC, I can't believe we've got this far. Uh, it's, it's incredible how the time is flying. Uh, should we say bye-bye? Can we see him? Bye-bye to Prince Albert of Monaco, who's just walking off, came in for an incognito visit, which I've just ruined. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and uh, we'll, speak to, uh, we'll speak to Prince Albert of Monaco later on as well. Uh, he's been coming in regularly during this flight, and I think we can guarantee he'll be here uh, once we arrive in Hawaii. Thanks for watching, and we will see you 4.50 UTC, the next energy neutral evening. Can you catch it?